Welcome back to another video. This is the Bookkeeping Master. In the previous video, we looked at adding suppliers, editing suppliers, and viewing the activity tab on the supplier account. So far in this course, we've gone through the nominal ledger, adding new nominal codes, viewing nominal codes, editing nominal codes, that sort of thing, the very basics. We've also looked at the basics of the sales ledger, the customer module, adding customers, invoicing customers, editing customers, and now we're on the supplier module or the purchase ledger. In this video, I'm going to go through recording invoices and credit notes for suppliers. So supplier invoices or purchase invoices and supplier credits or purchase credits. The process is very much the same as the sales ledger, the customer module. In the customer module, we use the batch invoice and batch credit note. With the supply module, it's exactly the same thing. We have batch invoice and batch credit. So if I click on batch invoice, we have a very similar box appear, just like the one that appeared with the batch customer invoice. We have batch supplier invoice. All we need to do is put in the supplier code or the supplier name and we'll have a drop down list appear. I've only got one supplier showing because I've only added one supplier to the software. Put the date in of the invoice. So let's do the 15th of the 9th, 2019. The due date, this will be calculated automatically or set automatically depending on the credit control default the payment terms that you set for the supplier. To change the payment terms, just go to the supplier account and change the payment terms and make sure you save. It's pretty straightforward and simple. The invoice reference, so that can be the reference on the invoice. We then have the nominal code. So let's say this invoice is for advertising, 6201. We then have a number of columns for department, project reference, and cost code. You can ignore these. These are more advanced features of Sage, and I'll come to these later on in this course when we look at the advanced features of the software. If you've got the basic version of Sage, these columns won't even show, so you don't have to worry about them at all. The details of the invoice, of the invoice so that's the details or the description of the invoice. So it could be like one times month advertising online that's just as an example the net amount the tax code once again this will show the default tax code set in the supplier account let's say that for whatever reason this invoice does have tax on so we put t1 so the vat the sales tax is calculated automatically all we then need to do is click save. Once again, if you've got the basic versions of Sage, then amount paid and pay date will not show. Those columns won't exist. If they do show, then please continue with this course because I'll go through these columns later on in this course. These are advanced features of the software. So let's click save and then exit. You can see there's a balance on this supplier account now for £600. If I go to the supplier account by double clicking and go to the activity tab, you can see we have this purchase invoice showing for £600, which is outstanding. You can see O slash S outstanding. It's outstanding on their account. Now to do a credit note is exactly the same, but instead of clicking or selecting batch invoice, we select batch credit. Fill in the details, we have the same columns appear. You don't have to put a minus in. You just put the whole number in as a positive. So let's do 100 this time with T1. Click Save. Now if I go to their account, you can see their balance has come down. And on their account, we have the outstanding credit note, purchase credit, and also the purchase invoice. So it's all pretty straightforward. There are a number of reports for suppliers that you can access at the top right here. Also labels and letters. 
Age Creditors is a great report to run because this will show everything that's outstanding for suppliers and the balance on their account. But once again, we'll come to that later on in this course. I am very much covering the basics at this stage. If you continue with this course, then we'll come back and you'll be able to see me use reports and other features of the software. But for now, you know the basics of how to use the supply module. Let's move on to the bank module.